My name is Lynn Stevens. I'm with the Ohio Grandparent Kinship Coalition. We're a statewide advocacy organization. Been around since about 1998 and held several positions within um, OGKC is what we call ourselves. So I'm happy to be here today. Thank you, thankful for the invitation for from AFCA as well. We partnered with them on a couple of initiatives over the years, so grateful to be here. I'm just gonna give kind of an overview of kinship. Um, I'm sure many of you may be familiar with kinship generally, but just some kind of specific highlights and then things that we're working on at OGKC. So with that, what is kinship? Kinship is a centuries old tradition um, that has existed amongst most cultures before it even had a name. So even now, families don't know uh, that they are kinship families. They just know they're doing the right thing and the thing that they need to do to help take care of their child or their grandparent. So raising um, grandchildren or other extended family members, raising their nieces, nephews, um, godchildren, or adults who have close family ties with the children, all encompass kinship care. Um, and it could also be um, legal custody of a child may or may not be involved um, and the child may be related by blood, marriage, or not at all, or adoption. So studies have shown, as you all know um, and um, are aware, kinship care is preferred placement for those children who are unable to live with their biological parents and in fact it's law um, that that should be the primary placement for a child, to be considered for a child once they have to leave their biological parents' place of um, residence. So kinship needs are very important, and kinship families are very important today. As you also may know, types of kinship care, informal and formal. So informal, a child is placed with a kinship caregiver with no court involvement, and custody is not necessary. Um, grandparent power of attorney is also, also authorized um, by the parent in some cases to be able to enroll the child in school and obtain medical care and it's filed with the court for a year and the parent can revoke it at any time. Also caregiver authorization, this is specific to grandparents and when the grandparent doesn't know where the parent is or can't reach them, they um, fill out the caregiver authorization and again, filed with the court so that they can do the necessary actions they needed to for school and medical reasons. And then we have formal. Uh, kinship caregiver files for custody and is granted custody by the court. The court must approve return of the child to the parents. A child welfare agency removes the child from the parent's home and then assumes custody and places the child with an approved relative. The agency may return the child to the parent or ultimately petition for the court to award custody to the caregiver. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. I'll try to speak up, project, sorry. Um, and then licensed foster care parent. So the kinship caregiver can become a licensed foster care parent and through the child welfare agency. And the caregiver must complete all requirements to become licensed foster parents. So are there any foster parents here or, okay, some of you have custody of your relative like through the court as well? Okay. Anyone not have any court involvement right now, informal? We have court involvement, but I mean we've had in the past, but um, we've been trying to obtain our kin. So, and we were, we were, we were an approved kin home. Oh, okay. Wonderful. That updated to adoptive home. So, but okay. yeah, it's been a long ongoing process. So, mm. we're an approved relative, but uh, they hadn't placed the kids with us, the girls. So. Okay. So that's where we're at. Okay. Do you hope to adopt one day? Or yeah, are we any? did update to adoptive. I mean, yeah. Okay. But we would. Right. Put yeah, together. We, Still in we process. We would adopt them. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, you know. Yeah. But but is mostly everyone in Franklin County here or Columbus or? Stark County. Stark. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. 
Uh, Crawford? Cuyahoga. Oh, Cuyahoga. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Start Cuyahoga. Wow. Thanks for coming down today. <laughs> wow. Okay. And just a little history about how we kind of came about and this history of kinship in Ohio. So in the late 80s and 90s, uh, the rise of the heroin and crack cocaine epidemic resulted in increasing numbers of children entering the child welfare system. So in order to reduce the numbers of children in former foster care, which is costly and not the best place for the ch child, um, increased efforts to place children in and support kinship care placements began. Um, in 1992, the Ohio Department of Human Services established a kinship, kinship preservation program as part of the NEE Casey Foundation Family to Family Program. And relatives were eligible for a one-time cash payment of $500 for six months to, for costs associated with caring for their uh, relative child. The program lasted for like 18 years and then um, it um, kind of ended. But still some of the successful practices from the program are still used today. In 1997, the Ohio Department of uh, Ohio General Assembly directed the Ohio Department of Aging to develop a report on grandparents raising their grandchildren. And then um, this um, effort was led by Representatives Barbara Boyd of Cleveland and uh, Joan Lawrence, uh, formerly who represented the Delaware County area, Central Ohio. So there are some true champions um, who will, will, we will be forever grateful for their efforts in this area of kinship care. Uh, in 1998, the Ohio Department of Aging, they released the um, report on older adults caring for their relative children. And it just had lots and lots of recommendations for the Ohio Gen General Assembly um, to consider for kinship caregivers, um, including you know, monetary assistance, uh, Medicaid uh, health care for um, the children, making it easier for access to the health care and enrollment in school. Um, so just lots and lots of recommendations which have been instituted today. So we're thankful for that report. And again, for Barbara Boyd um, and Joan Lawrence and their efforts, because without that, I don't we might not have gotten this far. Um, so great for them. And then our coalition in 1998 also was created by a group of concerned individuals. Um, Sandy, what's Sandy's last name? Powers. She's a grandparent here in Columbus, and she was the original creator, creator of our kinship uh, family group here in Columbus. Um, so her efforts to create that kinship support group led to our coalition being established um, over the years. Um, and in 1999, the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, they convened, a, convened the statewide shareholders process and asking for recommendations again on addressing the kinship um, needs. So from, the, from that, those efforts, we got a navigator program created, information and referral line, statewide resource guide, the Kinship Advisory Council, which is kind of defunct right now. It's not too active with ODGFS, but um, it, it, it was active, and hopefully um, we're trying to take steps to reinvigorate that um, advisory council. <clears throat> and then a separate unit of the ODGFS, the Office of Children and Families, was established. And I see in 2000, Ohio Kinship Navigator um, is created. So the program is a statewide program, uh, some pilot projects throughout the state, and um, it's it, you know fizzled out, disbanded. But then now we have a new navigator program that I'll just mention here in a few slides here. So we also had federal legislation that was very helpful for kinship caregivers. Um, the Family First Prevention Services Act um, enacted February 9th, 2018. And it includes many child welfare reforms that support children, parents, and kinship caregivers. Um, it provides prevention services to children, kinship caregivers, and parents to keep the children safely out of foster care. So mental health and substance abuse treatment, in-home parent skill-based services, and federal child welfare funds are available for up to full 12 months of prevention services 
to help the entire family to keep the child out of foster care. The federal legislation also reduces licensing barriers to increase the use of uh, kinship foster homes, encourages kinship navigator programs, promotes family engagement for children who live in group settings. Um, so Ohio does use federal funding here for many of our programs to help our kinship caregivers. So that's great help too for kinship families. This is the next one. All right, uh, another example of uh, federal assistance. Well, the uh, Family First Transition and Support Act of 2019, so introduced by our own Senator Sherrod Brown and Debbie Stabenow. So he's a true champion as well in DC for our kinship families, um, just families generally. So um, the bill that they introduced um, provides states with resources and flexible um, flexibility to transition to family first by enhancing support for parents and relatives to care for their children. Um, their efforts, their bill helps to eliminate some of the outdated federal Title IV E requirements and uh, to make children, more children eligible for this funding. So some of the outdated requirements um, included like income-based limitations on a child's el eligibility for federal foster care support. So that flexibility um, would be very helpful. Uh, it also expanded kinship support services, like child care, transportation, uh, legal needs um, of the families to keep children in their homes. And this bill um, has not been passed. It's been pending for a couple years. So I'm sure um, it's in the Finance Committee still. So I'm sure uh, Senator Brown, Debbie Stabenow, they'll probably reintroduce it. Because it ends, you know, all the bills expire if they don't pass by a certain, the end of the um, federal um, year, fiscal year, which is uh, October, no, September 30th. And then it starts over October 1st. So. Um, they will have to reintroduce it for the next Congress. Um, it probably won't pass and have enough time to pass. Um, and then just um, just to clarify some more about the Title E, uh, the Social Security Act is the largest federal funding stream of four child welfare activities, including foster care, adoption assistance, and guardianship assistance program. So uh, Title IV E is just very important funding for child welfare generally and, and kinship programs here in Ohio and throughout the state. Um, one other thing that helped uh, kinship <laughs> caregivers is a lawsuit that was filed in 2017. Um, IDO, that's a family member, the uh, um, plaintiff, and versus Glisson. So the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit in Cincinnati ruled that Kentucky's child care agency, the Kentucky Cabinet for Health and Family Services must pay approved unlicensed relatives to care for children in um, to care for children in foster care, just as they do licensed foster parents. So the state must now provide monthly foster care maintenance payments to relatives who are approved by the state to care for their child in the legal custody of the child <coughs> welfare, welfare agency. Um, this decision also says that all approved and licensed foster care parents have a privately enforceable right to monthly foster care maintenance payments, and this means an approved relative can bring a lawsuit against the child welfare agency to get those maintenance payments. Uh, and because the 6th district um, impacts Ohio, Michigan, and Tennessee, of these three states, Ohio is the only state that is similarly um, that has similarly approved relatives and therefore is the only state um, of the three um, where caregivers should be impacted. Um, Ohio, um, the governor has not responded to the Glisson lawsuit, although we've had meetings with um, him and the former director of the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, uh, Kim, uh, I forget her last name, but they, it was on their radar screen and they were taking steps to um, respond. But before they could finish their work, we have some relatives, um, foster parents here in Ohio who filed a lawsuit against the governor 
in uh, November 19, 2020. And on behalf of the eligible kinship caregivers, um, the lawsuit alleges that Ohio state officials are violating federal law by failing to provide approved kinship foster payments with the same foster care maintenance payments the state provides to licensed non-kinship foster parents. Um, so, let's see, in December 3rd, 2020, the plaintiffs filed a motion for a preliminary injunction requesting the court to order kinship foster care maintenance payments and should start immediately. So, that's still pending. Um, stay tuned for um, updates. However, in the meantime... From an oh, advocacy point of view, is there anything foster parents here could do to help <laughs> help push that, help put pressure on folks about that? Oh, definitely um, the governor. But I, um, I, good question because here now we will see that the legislature, um, the 133rd General Assembly, they did introduce the kinship support program. So this was addressing the, the uh, court case. Um, so they did take some action. And um, although it's not the full um, scope of what the judge ordered, um, this is what the legislature came up with. Um, let's see, and it acted December 29, 2020. So the kinship support program um, provides monthly payments to eligible kinship caregivers for placement of children in their homes. The caregivers cannot be certified as foster caregivers and the child is in temporary, permanent or legal custody of a public children's services, services agency. Um, so this benefit, of course, any state budget is going to be limited. So, you know, that's the limitation that we're facing, of course, our state budget. But um, it's limited and it's capped. So right now, so you'll get a receipt for nine months from the enactment date when the child was already placed. So the enactment date is December 29, 2020. So for nine months after that, you'll be able to get the kinship support program payments. And then um, they separate, separate it out in time frame. So nine months from the enacted date, and then nine months from the date of placement after the enactment date. So if you're after the December 29th date and you got um, placement, then you'll be eligible for nine months. And then the third timeline is six months from the date of placement when the child is placed after nine months from the enactment date. So nine months after the December 29th, if you got custody, then you'll get six months of uh, payments. And during and after the time limit, the caregiver can apply to become a licensed foster parent to receive foster care payments. Um, if not, then that KSP payment ends. And the amount is $10.20 per day for each child, each kinship child. And the caregiver, you, can, you have to make a choice though, if you want the KSP payment or if you want the Ohio First, first Ohio Works First child only payment. Um, so since the KSP is like, you know, nine months in duration, generally um, the Ohio Works First payments would, would stop while you get the KSP payments. And then they would resume after the KSP payments end. So, so, that, so that lawsuit um, is, is um, the kinship um, person is, is requesting the same amount of money that they give to foster care? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. yes, exactly. Like, without a time frame, they just want it generally, yes, 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 to be able to be paid um, the same as foster care parent payments, uh, parents. Um, so, yes. Well, the question, um, would they, for kinship, would they have to be go through the same, um, like, training? And, and uh, because, I mean, um, we have a license. You know, and I think that, I mean, I think 10 20, $10, 20 is ridiculous. But um, at the same time, the foster parent has a license. We have to do continuing education. We have to, you know, uh, we're a mandate reporter. So there's a lot more involved in mm -hmm. a, a, a licensed foster parent than someone that is kin mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. providing care for a family member. So mm -hmm. I, I think they, huh? I think they, um, you know, that's a good idea, but I also think that they, uh, 
if they're wanting the same amount that we're receiving, it should they should be doing the same thing that we're doing in terms of, you know, um, you know, the education. Mm -hmm. the, um, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally understand. Agree. There is some training involved for the kinship um, KSP payments, but it's not to the level of the foster care. Um, some of the requirements are waived for the kinship um, KSP. Uh, some of the foster care um, training is waived for the KSP payments. Um, for you to get that within that nine months time frame, but there is some training they have to go through. Absolutely, yeah, there is, but not as much as yeah the foster care parent. So, but okay, yep. Because I think the lawsuit gets fully implemented in Ohio. Mm. That's better than this. Mm -hmm. That would be. Mm -hmm. So would that oversee this? I mean, if, if mm -hmm. we get the full impact of the lawsuit, then does this just go away or what? Right. What the legislature, <coughs> governor would have to right come up with another proposal, another plan that, yep, mm -hmm, would be indefinite, not time limited, and be equivalent, truly equivalent. So um, hopefully this will be expanded upon. Um, and But yeah, that glisten, they still haven't fully addressed it. So it, they still are supposed to. The state. And we're going to kind of do away with foster care. I mean, uh, I don't think foster care will completely go away mm. because every child doesn't have kin that will take them. Right. I think that's the case we want to have over 5,000 kids up for permanency in our state. But, um, you know, I, I definitely think that they should get be, being compensated for definitely opening their home. Mm -hmm. But to have the same uh, equivalency in terms of payment, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't think that would, you know, my opinion, um, they're not doing exactly the same thing that we're doing, you know. So, and not that we get all that great of a... <laughs> Up with DMA to begin with, but I'm just saying, like, we're mandated reporters as well. I mean, we have a license versus someone that do not have a license that is just um, um, allowing the kid to come in to stay. And they probably won't uh, report as much as what we are mandated to report because that's their kin. You know what I mean? That's their family number. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Governor DeWine is big on training for the kinship caregivers. Um, he would like equal training, um, almost equal to the foster um, parents, um, but he's got a lot of pushback on that because um, kinship, that's your family, I mean. So he, he's big on training, um, like as you seem to be as well too. So, but it's gonna have to be um, yeah, compromised and some flexibility. And um, Senator Brown is in constant uh, communication with Governor DeWine about using the Title IV E funding more um, to help with the kinship um, financial assistance for kinship programs. So Governor DeWine, Senator Brown, they really do go back and forth um, with um, how can Title IV E funding be used more um, for kinship families. So. Um, it's not over. It's going to keep going. But so this, mm -hmm. this KSP though, uh -huh. it, there's a income cap, correct? No. Or is uh, the no. or you get that regardless of income? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, was, mm -hmm. I was thinking mm -hmm. there was an income. And and then um, it happens automatically though with the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. So you don't need an application. They reach out to you. So um, my husband and I. Um, we fostered for 37 years now. We adopted four kids. Wow. And we currently have legal custody of one of our granddaughters. And I'm assuming we're getting the Ohio Works First, which is $10.20 a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, so your granddaughter has been a while since you've had custody of her, or is it recent? Um, she's four, and we've had her for two years now. Oh, okay. All right. So you're relatively new. So, yeah. Um, you should be, have gotten in contact by a hot apartment job and family services, yeah, regarding that. Um, if not, we have our flyers here. Just, uh, take a flyer and give us a call. <laughs> um, and we're happy to help you navigate through that. Um, and just some other resources here available through our great state of Ohio. 
um, KPI, as many of you may be aware, so the Kinship Permanency Incentive uh, Program it was KPIP, now it's just KPI, and it was created to support children and homes of family and friends who have committed to caring for the child when the birth parents cannot. So KPI is also time-limited um, incentive for payments to families caring for kin. Um, it's not the greatest amount, of course. Um, it's just never enough funding, but um, it, 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 it's something. <laughs> um, so that's available. Um, and then there are county KPI contacts um, because we know, we've heard over and over and over again, families would go to their local Job and Family Services office and asked about KPI and person at the desk just had no clue and then would send the person back um, or um, tell them the other programs that might be available, but then they never get the chance to apply for KPI. So it was just such a huge issue throughout the whole state. So now there's specific KPI contacts at each JFS office throughout the state. Um, so people won't be turned away now. So. Um, that's available, the Ohio Resource Guide, and um, that's through the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. It is a booklet, um, pages and pages of resources for um, kinship families um, in particular, but um, any family who is caring for a child in their home. So um, I think everyone's going to get the PowerPoint eventually, so if you click on the uh, link there, you can request those be sent to you in the mail, and it's just a great guide um, that's been available, and it has received input from we, the Ohio Grandparent Kinship Coalition, from other um, caregivers themselves, um, and PCSAO, other child welfare agencies, so it's just a great resource. If you don't have one, I would definitely recommend you ordering one from Ohio Department of Child and Family Services. Um, of course, child care, the big, 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 one of the big issues, as you all um, know. And now there is some child care um, financial assistance, but that is income-based. Um, so, but at least it's something available now. It hasn't always been available, so I think that's um, within the past couple of years. Um, and then Ohio Works First, of course, you may know about that, the child only benefit and I don't know if this is still the current number, but we got this number for as of March 2020 um, for a benefit for one child was $302 and $412. We had two children, and it goes up, you know, if you have more. I, I, we didn't put the amount that it goes up, but only a little monthly? bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, monthly. It's supposed to be monthly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's um, based upon the child's income, so of course they're going to qualify for it. Your income is not, the caregiver's income is not considered. Um, and home energy assistance programs, of course, any kind of utility assistance, of course, through maybe your local community action agencies. So that's out there, of course. Um, and the usual, um, you know, the PIP available um, through the ODGFS didn't have that. Um, and utility bill assistance, um, food stamps, of course, um, for the child, Medicaid for the child, of course. Um, so some of the resources. And then the Ohio Kinship and Adoption Navigator Program. Um, we mentioned on the previous slide how the OGKC was part of that in 1998. Um, it was a group of pilot programs, navigator programs throughout the state. It was only like eight or so. so. It was just like a handful. Um, and that was a successful program, but the funding kind of ended, so it kind of dwindled out. And then just recently, last year, um, OCAN yeah, reinvigorated and was funded by the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services to be the statewide uh, navigator for adoption and for kinship. So there's a one eight four four number, a toll-free number, and if you're having any concerns, um, have questions related to kinship or foster care, they're a resource. Um, so reach out and to be kind of candid, um, they do do a lot of referrals to OGKC when it comes to kinship because, again, they're kind of new and they have 
started the, um, they got gotten lots of funding from o o Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, but because some of their staff aren't as um, familiar with um, kinship as kind of our statewide coalition, we do get some calls for help with families who they may not um, be able to assist as well. So again, try calling if you have a question or you want to know about some other resources available to you as a kinship um, uh, family or provider, caregiver, um, and they should be able to help you. So if not, again, take our flyer and reach out to us. But they get millions of dollars, so we're hoping that as their staff get acclimated, gets more training um, um, and experience, um, they will be a true navigator <clears throat> program for the state. But they're working, they are, they're working, and they have <clears throat> different locations throughout the state. So if you go to their website, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll be able to see which um, office services the county that you live in. And they've started running ads. Has anyone heard any of their ads on the radio for Ohio Ken? I know they were running here in Columbus, and they still are right now. So no one's heard of them yet? Or? Yeah, I, you I, heard of them? I, I've been in contact with them, but they haven't been able to assist us because we haven't yet received placement. So um, I, we are apparently loaded in their system. Yeah. But hmm. Mm -hmm. they can't uh, assist us with any hmm. anything. Any questions? Whoa, not so, any questions? Hmm. Yeah, and I guess it's because we haven't been received placement, so uh, they couldn't even provide me a list of uh, names for, like, uh, you know, legal, uh, you know, a list oh. of uh, legal mm -hmm. attorneys or something, you know. Okay. Which I... You know, did on my own, but, huh. um, so yeah, and That's they very said that I'm already we're already loaded in their system, but <laughs> wow, so, wow. Um, but yeah, I would hope to see the in the future maybe you know Ken that's trying to obtain maybe they can provide them some sort of resources to yes and and you know um, wow wow just to know where to go mm -hmm. a navigator for us mm-hmm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> so because wow. we've been navigating the system on our own oh my goodness i mean yeah so that is what they were created for. Right. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of whether the child is placed in your home or not, they are supposed to be able to assist, advise, or not advise, but give information for, yeah, anyone who well, yeah, I've is... I've spoken to um, a, a few um, from there. Um, one of them said that you could get them to assist you. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, at least we know that the Legal Aid Society um, serves the Southeast Ohio. They kind of specialize in helping kinship families. Um, so I can take your information down. Are you still looking for a legal um, we, advice or you found? We um, did not. We, okay. we are currently do not have a, a legal representation. Our, our legal representation uh, left the cases in September of 21. So we are, and it's been a struggle because the cases are so old and complex. Mm. So it's a constant, well, we're gonna refer you here. Mm. We're gonna, I, I've spoken to, I don't know how many attorneys in the state. Oh. I've actually also spoken to outside the state because I was referred to an outside. Mm. Uh, state a, attorney group who was supposed to review the cases. I, I submitted documentation to them, over 75 documents, and they were supposed to send us to, uh, refer refer us to the best 
uh, or attorney for our situation, mm. and uh, I was last referred to um, an attorney that doesn't have very many years' experience, and I don't know that. Uh, yeah. So. Wow. Um, you, you yeah, it's just like I talk to these legal <sighs> My attorneys, and uh, we're constantly getting referred. Referred after referred after referred. I've done our own timeline, <laughs> even when we had paid representation. Oh, uh, I did a, our own timeline. Oh my goodness! Is it just your case is so complex, or yeah. is this kind of unique? Over five or? Years. Oh my goodness! So we children in foster care. Or? Yes, they were in foster care. We've had two nieces emancipate. Uh, three that are. <coughs> I'm not quite sure whether uh, the county agency of jurisdiction told us that the girls were adopted by their uh, their placement that had them at the time, but then our home study was updated to an adoptive home, and uh, the date that they said that the girls' was adoption was finalized, um, our attorney actually charged us legal fees for that date, so I'm not quite understanding. And, and the agency of jurisdiction sent us a letter saying that our home study was for other children in the system. So, so is it your kids? So yeah, we have a very... Is it your kids? I'm is sorry, is it your kids? They're nieces. Oh, yeah, nieces. So they are currently, they are adopted by somewhere else. I was told. Well, that's what the agency told, but and the, um, they sent us a letter, and then they also sent us the director also sent us a um, sent me an email that in the email um, they also said one of our nieces that emancipated was adopted, which is not true because we have contact with that niece, and she she's not adopted, but the director of the agency. Of jurisdiction told us that she was adopted as well, and that's not true. Is this Brandon County? Uh, Brandon County? No. No, we, uh, Hancock County was uh, jurisdiction, and uh, my husband and I live ah, in Hamilton County? No, Hancock. Oh, I was about to say, Hamilton County is a mess. They have tons oh, of lawsuits against so, so, no. My husband and I, we live in Wood County. Wood so County. We're neighboring county to the jurisdiction county. <laughs> anyway, I, I would love for the Ohio CAN to be able to help families like ours navigate because I've essentially been the navigator for our family, you know, who is a, a, a minority family because my husband's family is, um, his mom immigrated here from the Philippines, so my husband is, is part Filipino, mm. and so, my goodness. and our nieces are, you know, two races, <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, so we've been navigating this system based upon my research mainly, <laughs> so. How old are they? Yeah, I'm from our school age. Uh, well, we had two nieces emancipate. Um, they're 22 and 19. The 19-year-old, she um, is a young mother. Um, and then uh, the minor children are 9, 7, and 6. And those are the ones you're trying to get. Yes. And we went to court last in 2020. And we said that we would take the girls, the three girls, into our home. And then they proceeded on with, um, they said we had to update to an adoptive home, which we did. Um, and then after we updated to an adoptive home, then they said that the girls' adoption was finalized. Mm. But we still had an attorney on the case who didn't leave the case, cases until September of 2021. So, and, uh, so, so they in a foster home in Amcat County, or? I don't know. The agency only told us that they were an hour from 
Hancock County, so I don't know which direction. <laughs> so, isn't adoptions um, uh, public record? Can they pull that up in public record or no? Private? I've actually mm -hmm. also was, um, I, I don't know if this attorney was like a pro bono attorney that was kind of assisting us or whatever, but she had uh, recommended that I put in a uh, request uh, to the state office for their birth certificates, which oh. I did, I just... and I paid for their birth certificates and everything. And then um, like six months went by and well, they said that they couldn't find they couldn't find the girls in the system that they were going to refund me, and it was like six months. I finally got the check. Of course, I'm not cashing the check. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't want to cash. The, I'm not cashing those checks. Uh, just the same as the courthouse tried to refund us um, uh, prior payments of uh, when we filed to intervene, um, the court. Um, tried to, uh, you know, send me the check for the refund, and I called the courthouse and I told them, I'm not cashing the check. You can take the money, as little as it is. I understand that, but take it towards the care of the girls. Um, uh, wow. If the girls have been adopted, the birth certificate well, I don't, will, list them, will list the adopted parents right. as the parents. Mm -hmm. That's they, right. they actually changed the birth certificate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that may be why they couldn't find them. Right. If you, well, if I, you were asking under their previous name. Mm -hmm. Right, but I, I'm also mm -hmm. questioning whether or not that they changed the girls' as, uh, Name, they probably yeah. could. They could have. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one foster kid that have. we had when well, it got adopted, they changed his whole name. Mm. Yeah. They, they but that's public record. Money. Yeah, you can find the name but, change. Um, but when we had we had a meeting also with uh, the jurisdiction county in uh, uh, let me see, uh, 2021, <sighs> which is which is after. They said that the girls girls' adoption was finalized. We had another. We had another Zoom meeting with the county of jurisdiction who said on the Zoom that you're aware of a pending adoption. And I caught the placement supervisor say that, and I called her out on it. And then my husband said, okay, wait a minute. Are they finalized? <laughs> right. Or, you know, are, are the girls finalized? And then she said yes, and I said, you just said pending. Mm -hmm. You said pending adoption, and now you're saying it's finalized, which is all. Mm -hmm. So then my husband got upset and left the Zoom, you know, he said that's it. You know, because we've went through two home studies for the girls. We've been here just the entire time since day one. We, you know, we were listed by the parents as a possible relative for the girls. Mm. Uh, we've been to court a couple, like I said, a couple of times so far. We've stood in court and said we would take them, mm -hmm. and we're fighting against the foster uh, that was an adopted home that they put them in. My goodness. Okay. Um, I'm but like, we wow. Are, I we, lost when we went to court I'm, on that day, the caseworker said the judge asked, "Well, what's?" what's the status with the Johnson's home study, and she said that their home study was approved. I have it in writing from the court transcripts. So we were approved relatives. <laughs> and you should have gotten the priority, so to speak, so, yeah. in, so oh my goodness. But they've been moved around the system for, mm -hmm. they've been at least three placements that we're aware of. Oh my at goodness. Least three. Yes. So the attorneys that you've hired, they've all just like thrown up their hands, or just didn't know what to do, or they well, went the, as the far as they could. Attorney, the last attorney was, um, you know, uh, there's nothing more that he can do. But I, I really didn't feel like he, he did really much. represented or advocated at all because, you know, he's contacting me for case status a lot of times. I'm like, why aren't you contacting me for case status? <laughs> You know, for, mm. for me, like, I don't understand the 
this. You're supposed to tell me this. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's, but, a, there's a new law out that um, we was talking talking to talking to Doc over lunch that uh, this new law for for uh, foster parents if a child was in their home for a uh, minimum of 12 months, right. they can then be considered kin, uh, but it has to be uh, ordered by the judge, and they then will be equal to other kin members in the family. Um, I, don't think, I don't think your situation happened this way, mm -hmm. but according to this law, foster parents can now be kin after 12 months of being in their home if the judge um, deem it as so, according to this new law that was just passed. Did you hear about that? We heard about the bill and we wrote letters, um, oh my goodness, that would place, yeah, put foster care parents on the same level as kinship parents. We have been monitoring and, yeah, that's news to me at least. Maybe my colleagues know. Oh my goodness. Here, like, they passed just um, here recently. They pushed it in another bill. At the oh. Last yep. So it's law. What? Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my goodness. That is definitely news to us. My goodness gracious. So then throughout this, mm. in, in addition to what uh, Shelley has shared, um, it seems like all the legislation that you've gone through has been that this is an important. Mm -hmm. And yet there's studies that are saying that kinship yes. is a superior placement yes. for the health and well-being of the children. That's Absolutely. not a judgment against foster parents, mm -hmm. but it's keeping children within their family. Mm. So what is the problem? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's apparent at both the mm -hmm. state and national level, it is not a priority. And yet we're talking about the well-being of children, take these books out of the school, and all of this stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, and then you're talking about the governor approves, you know, is um, promoting training Unless it's for teachers to have guns from 700 hours to 25. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. it's such hypocrisy mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. this whole thing. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And just continue I wasn't going to oh. say anything. <laughs> God, My geez. husband and I have recently lived through this with Hancock County um, with another grandchild. Wow. And her mom and a year ago lost custody, didn't, the agency got custody of the two kids, okay? We have been licensed foster parents for 37 years, adopted our granddaughter's dad through the system. Hancock County was not letting us see her. Nothing. No visits, nothing. She her and her brother went to a friend of mom's that is right there in town with us, but they wouldn't let us here. So we fought it, went and got an attorney, was in court. It was a joke. We saw that it was getting ridiculous. Yeah. Nothing was going to happen, so during a recess, we met with the other attorneys, said, okay, we will drop, because we was going after custody of the kids. Yeah. Um, so we met with all the attorneys, because of course mom had an attorney, dad had an attorney, um, guardian at litem. You know, everything. It was, there was, I think, eight attorneys in there. We agreed to drop the going after custody if they would allow us to see the kids. 
Um, we have been able to see them. We still can't have them overnight. Connor's dad cannot have her overnight, but he was granted permission to. But the family that has her has always got, oh, we're going to be out of town that night. Um, she, she wants to spend time with you, but not overnight yet. And I know this is all lies. Um, you know, like I said, we're licensed foster parents. We are approved to have any other children in our home, but not our granddaughter. That's what they, they told us, that they, they assigned us an adoption worker that was through the jurisdiction county. And I said, I don't understand why. And they wanted us for other other kids in the system. And we said, no, if we have relatives in the system, that's who we want. That's who we want. That's who we have been here for since the beginning. We have opened our home. We have arranged rooms many times, like at least three, or if not four times, we have had the rooms arranged for the girls. But, you know, obviously our own children, we have, um, a daughter, she's now 21, and our son is 17, he'll be 18 in November. So five years have went by, you know, and they rotated rooms. Our son went to a larger room in our home, you know, and then our daughter moved out and uh, opened the bigger room. And so, <laughs> you know, our, our space for the girls have rotated around our but it's home. There. Yeah, you know, yeah. So are they in current foster care, your grandchildren? Are they adopted? Or no, they, they are in kinship? a kinship because uh -huh. they're friends of the mom, mm -hmm. the bio mom. Oh. Um, so the bio mom gave So that, that kinship overrides grandpa. Mm -hmm. You know, why? I don't know. But... So the mother gave her friend Kim for the girls? Well, the day that Children's Services got involved, she said, I want the kids to go to. Um, so who has custody of the kids? Is the agency does. Yes. The agency does. So then the agency should be arranging um, visits. visits, correct? Sure. Right. Wow. You know, her, her dad that didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. So can you, so you, and that's your son? Yes. He's still able to, to see her? Yeah, and, and he was recently given permission to have her overnight, but he hasn't got that yet. I, but he still had to go through the parenting classes, the all these classes that they required him to go through and everything. And he didn't do anything wrong. The bio mom did, you know. Mm -hmm. But he, he did go through all of that class. He's went through them coming to his home once a month and all this. And mm -hmm. So the kinship uh, family has more, um, oh, it has, I guess it's over the day be a son. How, how can that be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it said the mom requested or um, right. stated that well, preference. Well, I've been told that um, Ohio is a mom state. It is. Okay, so we're on the paternal side. Mm -hmm. And my mother-in-law never got notified that her grandchildren were in care. That wow. it never, nothing. No phone call, no letter. Wow. She was only notified by us because we got a letter and actually our our nieces one of our teenage nieces actually when they were being removed from their home I was one of the relatives that they tried to reach that night I went to the police station and I was told it was they were removed on an emergency or it was uh, emergency removal or mm -hmm. uh, whatever emergency custody but then I, wow. but 
That's interesting. It's Hancock County, though, but too. Yeah, my, oh my, my niece, I was one of the relatives that she tried to reach out to while they were being removed, and, and it, I, it went, went, my voicemail was full. She couldn't, I seen the phone number, you know, and then they, the, the agency ended up taking the phones from the girls, the teenage girls, you know. But I, I was able to get a message through Facebook messaging to the other teenage niece, and I said, you know, I seen a, a missed call. What's going on? And she says, we're in foster care. So that's what prompted me to try to call. Of course, it was after after hours, yeah. after 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know what to do. I go to the police station finally after, you know, trying to figure out what, what to do. Mm -hmm. And and I have to pick up the phone that's outside of the police station in the lobby area because the doors were locked. And I said, you know, my nieces were removed. I'm here, you know, I'm their aunt. And they said, all I can tell you is, you know, the emergency removal. Well then found out that it was 30 some days um, that had passed um, from the uh, removal order before they were actually removed. It was 30 some, over 30 days. Wow. Yes. It was over 30 days. Oh my Lord. That this they were is... actually, the, they were actually, the order was for December 23rd of 2016. We actually had had seen the girls for Christmas, December 25th of 2016, mm. and then they were removed January 25th of 2017. So I'm not quite understanding that, that it's over 30 days, but I don't know. I'm not That's probably what it was adjudicated. Huh? That's probably the adjudication hearing at 30 days. No, they were not removed until... 30 some days after they were, the judge yeah, signed the order, I guess, on December 23rd of 2016, but they were not removed from the home until January 25th. Mm. I don't know. I'm going to ask my colleague, Ron Browder, um, um, for his advice. Wow, that is whew, unbelievable. Oh, it's frustrating. I know, I know. Um, so Ron Browder, he's at another, I'm going to pull him to the side, Ron, um, what are your thoughts on what she might be able to do, but, um, mm, but yeah, this is kind of, wow, what we're here for, to help you navigate these difficult, because Ron and then also Barb, she's not up here, they're former um, employees of the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, so they kind of know the inside out, um, of kinship um, from the agency to save Ohio perspective, so I always call on them for help, help <laughs> with situations where, wow, I don't know, it's just, uh, just unbelievable, your story, so, um, but um, OGKC, Ohio Grandparent Kinship Coalition, um, there's our website, but we just try to be um, a resource um, for kinship caregivers. Um, and I put in here an example of our advocacy, and this is the bill that you mentioned um, in the back there, young lady, um, House Bill 506 and then House Bill uh, 289. So they were introduced by two different legislators, Gail Manning um, up in Northeast Ohio, and then again, um, like a year later, representatives Reardon McLean and Gail Pagvala. So this is where the child's placement um, it limits the kinship preference. So when they wanted the kinship, um, to the foster care um, parents or families to have equal rights, equal standing as the kinship um, families. And this is what we, we met, we wrote letters, called, and if this is this bill that you were saying was slipped into another bill, oh my goodness. Um, that is just devastating um, to hear um, if that is the same bill that we advocated for. Now, Representative Manning, she, after talking with her, 
and that was in 2020, she was like, okay, we'll just let the bill die then, because um, she wasn't aware of the kinship perspective, and she was going by her um, constituent in Lorain County, um, is where she um, represented. And so it's like, okay, that was fair, that's very good. But um, the other representatives, they weren't as um, um, open-minded as Representative Manny, so they were part of that. Um, they were just steadfast in there, serving their constituents and didn't really seem to want to hear um, the kinship perspective on, in the state and how this is going to affect so many families, not just in your district, but throughout the state. So I am really going to see, I have to look up and see if that bill passed and if that's part of the uh, bill, like a larger bill that was slipped in. Um, but we, we advocated, oh my goodness, um, that that wasn't fair. Um, mm. So uh, we also hold monthly meetings. Um, we have one coming up June 22nd. So if you go to our website, you'll be able to click on the um, square for our June 22nd. And we're going to highlight kinship programs and resources across the state. So um, hopefully that will be helpful to our kinship families throughout the state. Um, who are new or who have been navigating the system for some time. Um, these are our officers. We have Dr. Ollie Jones, our president. Myself, Lynn Stevens, and Kathy Wright. We're co-vice presidents. And then Siobhan Jones is our co-treasurer. And Ron Brower is our uh, board chair. Um, we also have Barb Turpin. She's been a longtime member of the coalition um, over a decade. And she recently resigned as our co-secretary, but she's still behind the scenes. Um, so feel free to reach out to us. Um, again, pick up one of our flyers here. Um, and then right now we're also helping the Ohio Federation for Health Equity and Justice um, to do a study of kinship caregivers on the topic of oral health to see what the needs are, um, where gaps in service are, so we're offering the opportunity to get a $50 gift card. Um, if you were complete a survey, it takes about 15 minutes um, so that we could, um, we're part of a overall study um, through CareQuest. Um, they're looking for this information so that they can help improve services for kinship families. So um, that's available on our website as well. Um, or if you call Bob Turpin here, 562-0002, um, you can do it by phone, and it'll just take 15 minutes of your time. So if you're interested in helping out, that would be great. And again, you get a $50 gift card for your time. Um, um, and these are just the needs we've heard over the years that we continue to kind of advocate for. All of you all just know about the needs for um, the children have when they're placed in your home. So just know that we're here to help and um, advocate through our particular state legislators on these issues and the need that kinship families still have today. Um, um, and just some facts, but just generally kinship families, just there's a trend, um, they're just growing, the kinship families, grandparents raising grandchildren, kinship families um, caring for their relatives who are unable to live with their families, their mom and dad, their biological mom and dad, so it's just a trend, and just getting that message to our state legislators, to our, um, well, Sherrod Brown, he knows, members of Congress, um, governor, um, everyone knows, though, that the trend is that these families are increasing, so there's going to be a need for more assistance and help for the families over the years, you know. Um, some other resources, again, when you get this PowerPoint, however Oscar gets it out, um, to some other uh, support group at OSU, um, benefits.gov, um, grandfamilies.org, just um, some information that might be helpful um, for caregivers. So, support groups um, in Ohio can be found on the OGKC website, so by county, um, we've surveyed the, the state to see where the support groups are. Um, they were um, decreasing, and so now it seems like they're on the trend to get uh, increasing the number of support groups for counties. So hopefully you're connected with one, but if not, then feel free to go to ohiograndparentkinship.org and go to our um, support group tab there to see 
who might be available in your county, because that's very helpful. We've heard from families we've talked to who've called. Um, so I think that's my last slide here. Um, and it's been, wow, a pleasure to be here. And I'm going to catch Ron Brown before he leaves. Oh, my goodness, to see if he has any ideas for you. It just seems like at different levels, the court, the child welfare agency, just not, you know, protocols not being followed. Even the law may not, I'm not sure, but you've had attorney after attorney. Wow. That is, and it's interesting that Hancock County, Hancock County, mm, so maybe that's one of our more difficult counties, usually in the real rural areas. So, all right, well, we'll see what we can do to help. Thank you, yeah. thank yeah, you thank for you. your time. Thank you. Have a great day. This is the last one, right? Session for the whole yeah. entire conference. So, very good. Pleasure meeting you guys. Thank you.